So now that we understand that Python is just really our way of communicating to the computer, no different than using English to communicate to a friend, uh, then it comes down to, well, how do we start to represent data? How do we make our different communications with the computer? You know, if I come in and I just draw that symbol right there, never, I'm not even gonna say what that symbol is, but we all have an understanding of that symbol, right? I have that symbol's worth of fingers on my hand, right? And we also can attribute that to four letters. We can say, oh, well, that value is also being represented by this word. Well, the difference between these is that this symbol we'd consider it a numerical uh, value or numerical data, right? We know that, and just to say it, that that symbol represents five whatevers versus this idea of the word five, right? Now, I'm not saying uh, that I'm dealing with specifically the value of five, but if I'm just talking about the word, uh, those four letters, we would actually consider that a completely different type of data known as a string. And one of the things that we need to do inside of Python with strings is we need to add quotes around them. Now, there is an equivalent. I could also come in and that same word use single quotes. And in Python's perspective, that's perfectly fine as well because sometimes, uh, you know, if I said, uh, a string like it's there's a quote in the middle of that and so it would freak out if I uh, tried to represent it like this so it, it allows a little more flexibility of like oh you can use double quotes or single quotes and that's thank you Python but there are a number of different data types that there are uh, in in our language. You know, we have talked about the idea of numbers, and we'll dig into those deeper in a bit. We have sort of introduced the idea of uh, strings, and just as they're very simple as well, booleans are really, if you think about that LED light uh, going on and off, really you could switch those ons and offs to another logical value of true and false. There is electricity, there is not. It is true, it is false. Now, getting into those others, you know, as you can see, I've grayed them out. The idea is uh, these start to get into the world of collections, and as the semester progresses, we'll continue to sort of unlock these in our discussion. For right now, it's just, it. we're now just, let's focus on dealing with just simple one valued items before we start dealing with things that have multiple values in them as well. So as you can imagine, to start, we go with the most basic of basics. We're going back to math class. We're learning about mathematics operations, specifically the arithmetic operations. We get it. If you think about the idea of the plus sign, Universally, we all know what the plus sign means. It is addition. Same thing with uh, subtraction. But just like when I was talking about uh, proper syntax uh, with Python, right? If we think about the number of different ways we've represented multiplication in our lifetimes, right? This doesn't work in Python because, again, the X, uh, it's going to get used in our variables and in our uh, strings, and so we can't do that. And this uh, little dot, right, how is, what's the difference between these two? Oh, well, the dot's slightly lower, and yeah, okay, but the problem is that that's just super, you know, annoying and everyone will mix those up so someone once upon a time said no we're not going to do that either uh, definitely not going to do that so that's where we came to sort of accept the asterisk as our division symbol and the same thing goes on with our division or sorry 
the asterisk goes for our multiplication symbol and the slash is our division symbol. As you all remember, that symbol, again from you know math classes from years past where you do something like four divided by two. Oh, well, yes, that does work. But uh, again, if you look at your keyboard, it's not there. So it would be impossible for you to write code that includes that symbol. Why isn't it there? Well, it's not. I, I wasn't on the keyboard committee, so I. it's not there. <laughs> so instead, we use the slash. And if you think about it, that's no different than how we sort of represent fractions. So we do get into there. Now, there is obviously some PEMDAS going on as well. So if I have sort of my parentheses going on here, right, we all understand that uh, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. The parentheses happen first, then the uh, 2 times 3 would calculate out. So 4 divided by 2, 2, 2 times 3, 6. The last thing is this idea of the percent sign. And the reality is that is not a percent sign. This gets into some of the much more complicated uh, math or much more uh, complicated handling of math, if you will. So let's say, for example, 5 slash 2, right? Well, oh, we magically, our, our superior human brains can come in and say, oh, that is 2.5. Well, the problem is that that's not how sort of the computer will operate because, uh, you know, it's, again, the difference between uh, something like, five and 5.5. This is something known as an integer. It's a whole number. There is no decimal place. This is something known as a floating point number, which means that this 5.5 could also be 5.50, which could also be 5.500, which could also be 5.5000 etc to infinity there is an infinite number of decimal places that i could go that's pi if you think about it uh, so infinite number well again the computer is a simple machine and it can only handle a certain amount of operations at a single time right bits can only uh, represent two states a byte can only handle eight so it really doesn't like things that can go on forever so the idea behind this is this produces remainders. You might remember remainders way, way back from, uh, again, I don't know, it's like fifth grade, long division, whenever we learned long division. The entire idea here is, oh, well, if I took that five divided by two, right? Just like I've got here, oh, you know, five, two goes into five, two times. So I multiply that and I get a four and I subtract that four and I get a one. Well, again, if you think about what you did in long division, we didn't understand decimal places at that point in time. We didn't try and handle that. We just said R1. Well, that's what the modulus is, is my way of saying, oh, well, with a remainder of one. I don't care about this two. As you can see, there is no two going on here, so that gets skipped over, and I just deal with my uh, one. A way to see this in action. So to at least sort of see this going on, to zoom this in a little bit. So again, if I come in five slash two, right? Five slash two, I shift enter, I get a 2.5. Perfectly fine. Again, Python understands that you're trying to do division. It can handle that. But let's say, for example, I came in and I'll do a six, uh, six modulo uh, four, right? Well, again, what we're asking is uh, long division wise, <laughs> where are you? There we are. We're effectively saying four long division six, right? That'll go in four times. That's going to give me a remainder of a two. I don't care about that one. That one doesn't matter. I only care about the 
remainder. Nope. Shift enter. Two. Now there is some funky stuff that we can do as well. You saw that five slash two was going to give us division. Oh, if I did five slash slash two, ah, well, that it does integer division. So it will not actually give me uh, the uh, what's the word? It won't give me the decimal place. It returns it as a whole number. So it just completely throws out any form of remainder. Uh, whatsoever. But as you can see, we can do different operations with these different commands, and it's important to sort of understand them as well. One of the examples is we can actually use sort of the modulo to identify if something is a even number. So in this case, uh, 5 modulo 2. 2. 5 modulo 2. Again, what we're asking uh, with 5 modulo 2 is 2 divided by 5 goes in 2, 4, left over with a 1, remainder 1. If I see a remainder of 1, that is an odd number. Now if I did the same thing with 4, that's going to go 2 minus 4, gives me a 0. Technically, I'm going to have a remainder of 0 here. We just don't ever really kind of uh, include it, but if you notice, that'll be for any even value, and so you can even test this. So 5 modulo 2, we're going to get a 1. Uh, I don't know, 100 modulo 2. Again, what we should see here is a 0 because 100 is an even number.